So first things first, when you're applying a bandage, make sure that your horse is adequately restrained and isn't going to try and walk off halfway through. And also try and get yourself tucked away out of the wind. There's nothing worse than paper and packets blowing across the yard, scaring your horse and the bandage unwrapping itself halfway through. Having arranged our bandages neatly in front of us, first pick up the primary dressing layer and align it against the leg with the shiny side towards the wound. I find it much easier to bandage a leg with the cotton wool unspooling itself next to the leg as opposed to coming away underneath your hands. This allows you to apply tension more evenly and have greater control over the application of your bandage. As you apply your first cotton wool layer, try to overlap by approximately a third as you go up and down the lip. Start adjacent to where the wound is. In this case, we're assuming the wound is on the side of the cannon just above the fetlock. Then proceed up the leg and apply a padding layer just underneath the bottom of the knee joint and then come back down towards the foot. Once you reach the foot, I find it quite helpful to cover the heel bulb with a layer of padding as they're quite commonly associated with pressure sores. Don't go underneath the foot with your cotton wool layer, as if this gets wet, it will encourage debris and discharge to track back up through the cotton wool and over your wound. Having applied sufficient soft band to reach from the bottom of the knee to the heel bulbs, put your first pressure layer on the leg. Use a slightly elasticated dressing, but don't wrap this too tight, as you need to be aware the soft band on its own is insufficient padding to protect from pressure sores. Again, wrap from the top of the leg down towards the heel bulbs, overlapping by approximately one third each time. Always ensure you leave approximately half a centimetre of exposed soft band at the top and bottom of the dressing to avoid your elasticated layer from pulling tight and cutting into the exposed skin. Once you've reached the end of your elasticated layer, holding onto the end, Slide your finger underneath the last loop you've done and tuck the exposed end underneath. It doesn't need to be pulled too tight or have a knot into it as the friction alone should hold it in place. We're now applying our second cotton wool layer. You'll note that I'm using a cotton wool roll that's only approximately half as long as a normal one. This is very useful for wrapping around underneath the fetlock above the paston and the heel bulbs. You can alternatively unroll a full size bit of cotton wool and tear it in half, limiting its length, but if you can get hold of these half length ones in the first place, they're much easier for good to use. We're now using a full size roll of cotton wool and wrapping from the bottom of the knee down as far as the fetlock. I tend to put about three loops of cotton wool around the limb as I find this to be a manageable thickness for then applying our second tension layer. Now we're applying our second tension layer with more padding on the limb, we can begin to apply a bit more pressure and tension by pulling our bandage tighter. As before, try and overlap by approximately a third each time, as this means your bandage looks a fairly even finish at the end. If you're not entirely happy with the shape of your bandage after applying your second tension layers, you can always apply either more cotton wool or a further tension layer to try and even the shape out. In an ideal world, we want the outside of our bandage to be smooth with no lumps or bumps, but this can sometimes be difficult to achieve, especially if your horse is unhappy to stand still. Having applied sufficient cotton wool and tension layers, it's now time to put on our vet wrap. I apply this in a very similar way to all the previous layers, starting at the top of the leg and working down towards the foot and overlapping it by approximately one third each time. 
At the start, I tend to go above the top of the bandage by a couple of centimetres, but only wrapping the vet wrap very gently. This allows me to tuck this vet wrap down inside the top of the bandage once I'm done, which helps prevent bedding working its way down inside the top. At this stage, I pick up the leg and include the foot with my vet wrap, wrapping in the bottom of the foot to keep it enclosed from the outside. It can be sometimes easier to remove a shoe if the bandage will be on for a long time, as this helps prevent the horse from walking through its bandage very quickly. Tuck the top of the vet wrap down inside the top of the bandage. As this bandage includes the foot, I now apply a final layer of duct tape around the foot to keep it waterproof and to prevent the bandage from being saturated with water from the bedding. Because the duct tape is waterproof, I don't want to go too high, certainly no higher than the mid pattern because the hoof will sweat inside the bandage and if it's left on for more than a few days, the cotton will become quite moist. At this stage, put on plenty of gaffer tape. It's nice and cheap after all, and putting two layers at least under the foot will help prevent your horse from walking through the bandage too quickly. We should be able to fairly easily fit two fingers down inside our bandage and that tells us that it's not too tight. And because this is a forelimb, we've stopped below the accessory carpal bone. This bone on the back of the knee that's only very thinly covered by skin can very easily be pressure pointed and become quite sore. And so we stopped our bandage comfortably below that. Because we've stopped below that, however, we need to be careful we aren't putting too much pressure on the back of our bandage where it meets the tendons. So again, it's just the controlled application of tension as we put on our elastic and vet wrap layers that we don't wind this too tight. Thank you for watching this short video on how to apply a fall in bandage, and I hope you found it useful and informative.